Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon11970, and as always, I thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. All right, um, we're going to get a little bit more into um, some of the trickery that they use and they've been using for a very long time to make you have information that's right in front of you that you would never notice. So I'm going to repeat some of the stuff, especially for people that are watching this video for the first time. I'm not going to go through all the details. Obviously, I have other videos for that. But then I'm going to get into a little bit deeper how they, they basically throw all the stuff in your face with things that you probably are very familiar with and have probably have said several times in your life, but never put the pieces together. Because the way that they do it is they change the word, and, and I'm talking about the word phonetically. I'm not talking about actually looking at the word, because if you look at the word, you're going to think it means something else. But you'll see when I give dozens of demonstrations of this, that you see the phonetics and the sound of the word. You'll see how it will coincide with the fact that I've been talking about that the law that you think is giving you the justice that you think you have earned as a citizen of the United States, it really is not what you think it is. So again, I'm only talking about the United States, but some of this will pertain. Admiralty law works throughout the world. So some of the things that I'm going to be talking about are only applying to the United States, but the admiral law part will be universal. So please check your laws to verify in your own countries the differences. All right, so basically I want people to understand, and I need you to, to watch this entire video, because even if you know the beginning stuff that I'm talking about or you've heard it before, I want to put it in all perspective so you can kind of, the more you hear it, the more it sinks in. And that's why I make these videos so you can watch them over and over again until you memorize it and learn it. Because like they say in law, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So whether you believe it or not, it's irrelevant because it does not change the truth. Like I've always said, you don't have to believe in air to be able to breathe it. So with that being said, the law that you think gives you the justice and the, the the fairness of a trial. Most people confuse that with common law, which is how our country was founded. It's not common law. In other words, you're not going to get a fair trial because if you don't know the words and the definitions of things that you see in everyday English, they mean different things in court. And this is how they've deceived people for a very long time. Now, I use... Black's Law Dictionary, and I'm going to give you some definitions first, to, just to confirm, because with the Constitution, they changed, they basically, in a nutshell, they overthrew the government in 1871 and went from the United States of America, or even where it said the United States, where it was just the U and the S in capital letters, in all capital letters, under law, that defines something as a corporation. Now, let's first look up corporation in the Black's Law Dictionary. Now, I have the fifth edition because you, you want the earlier editions because of the fact is they started changing some of the words, so this way you can't really notice these things. So the newer versions may not have the same definitions. So let's go under first corporation. Okay, a corporation under law, now I'm not talking about just what the regular English is. It's an entity, a business, having authority under law to act as a single person distinct from the shareholders who own it and having rights to issue stock and exist indefinitely. A group or a succession of persons established in accordance with legal, legal rules, not lawful, there's a difference between lawful and legal, with legal rules into a legal or jurisdiction, a jur juristic person that has legal personality distinct from the natural persons. So they're telling you that there's a difference, there's a distinction between a person and a natural person. So they say the word person a lot of times. Now, in English, you think person means, well, look, the person talking about in this video is a person. Now, I'm not talking regular law. And I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about regular language. So already they're establishing, in a nutshell, that a corporation is an entity. It's a person that can be a shareholder with the rights to issue stocks. Okay? Let's look up the word person. Person can be defined. Now, there's several different versions of person, but they, law is based on presumption. So you, they're presuming you know the law. So because of the fact there's several definitions, 
that doesn't mean you're you're uh, you could pick and choose. But it also means that you have to be very careful because you can't just assume it means one or the other because it can mean all of them. It could mean one specifically. So you need to know the most important ones when it comes to you, the person. A person is a, a, a human being, a living body of a human being, an entity such as a corporation that is recognized by law as having most of the rights and duties of a human being. In this sense, the term includes partnerships and other associations, whether incorporated or unincorporated. So they talk about corporations. They talk about a person having most of the rights of a human being. They don't say all. So you have to listen to the terminology. So let's go to the next part. Because in the Constitution, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, they changed slave into civil people, citizens. So they, name, they go from natural person to persons. A natural person is different than a person. So let's get into citizen. Citizen is a person. Notice we already went to the definition of person. So see how it's all over the place? It makes it very difficult to find out these terminologies. It says a person who, by their birth or naturalization, is a member of a political community, owing allegiance to the community, and being entitled to enjoy all its civil rights and protections. A member of a civil state entitled to all its privileges. A member of a state. Pay attention to that. So, with that being said, you are not who you think you are. When you look at your driver's license, you see your name. You see it, you'll notice 99% of the people out there, they will see any of their identification as in all capital letters. So even though that you think that's you because it says your name, under law, this is what happens. And I know this is going to sound strange, but again, if you don't research it, you're not going to understand it, which uh, understand is another definition, stands under the authority, but that's, that's we're talking court for that, so that's not necessary to define. So, when you are born, and I'm going to go through the words, they, and I'm not going to go into the full details because I have other videos for that, but basically in a nutshell, when you're born, when the, your parents sign the certificate of live birth, they extract the DNA from the placenta that you leave behind. Now, if you leave something behind in law, it's considered abandoned. So somebody can take that. So what they do is they extract the DNA from your placenta. Your DNA is who defines you. Because even if you show an identification or you say, well, my name is John Smith. Well, that's nothing more than hearsay. DNA, any strand of DNA is going to be different for every single living thing or anything on, in the universe. So nobody has your DNA. So it's gonna, not going to be the same. So they basically take that DNA because you've abandoned it because you don't really realize that that's something important. And what they do is they create a dummy corporation that is under your name. The difference is they write it in all capital letters. So if you don't know what that means, you just think, well, that's a nice font that they use. That's how they trick you. It's hidden in plain sight. Now, if you notice in the, the uh, definition of corporation, they talk about stock. Well, they trade your name, your corporation, on the New York Stock Exchange. And I'm going to go through some of the phonetics so you can hear what's going on. Because the law of everything that's going on throughout this planet is not what you think. It's not common law. It's admiralty law, law of the sea. Now, people will say, well, I'm on land. How does that apply? Well, when you're born... You can't, you're mostly made of water. You're in water. You have your body's connected to your mother. That is why all ships are female. By Admiralty law, all ships are named feminine. There's a, it's not a coincidence. So if you think of what is the, the military of the sea, it's a navy. Well, you have an umbilical cord that's connected to your mother, the mother ship what's called a navel. Now, again, I'm not talking when you look at the word. I'm talking about phonetics. So you are in water. When you're born, you get born through a canal. Well, have you ever heard of a canal in water? 
You, your, your mother is a vessel. You ever hear a vessel of a sea? Now, where do you go? You go to a hospital to the delivery room. You deliver a baby. And who delivers a baby? A doctor or a doc. Well, where does a boat dock? Now, the reason they get into this stuff is you have what's called um, in admiralty law when a when it's all about commerce. It's all about doing business. So that's why they say nothing personal. It's just business. You have what's called a birth certificate. When a let's say, for example, and I've used this before, China ships things to the United States. The cargo has to be identified. So they do a certificate of birth. It's B-E-R-T-H. Now, if you look up the term birth in a uh, dictionary, birth is a storage a place in a boat or a train or a plane. So it's a storage capacity on a boat. It's the birth. Now, you dock to the shore. What do you, well, who brings out a baby in a delivery room? Well, a doctor or a dock. So when a product comes from one country to another, it has to have its own certificate of birth. They have a description of who it is, of what it is, where it came from. They give it a registration number and they, they put a date when it was created. And now it could go into that country and be used as commerce. So when you are born, they take it, not literally, but figuratively, you're coming out of your mother's vessel through a canal. They detach you from the navel, the umbilical cord. You are going from water to dry land. So you are docking. That's why a doctor gets you in a delivery room. Now, what other things get delivered? Well, have you ever ordered anything online and it gets delivered to you or shipped to you? Okay, these are not coincidences. So let's get into some of the terminology. So you have a birth certificate when you're born. Now, when you sign it, it starts out with a certificate of live birth. When you get it back, it no longer says certificate of live birth. It says birth certificate. Those are two different things. They may seem the same, but they take the word live out, which means they have made a corporation under your name. So if your name is John Smith, when you're born, your parents sign this certificate of live birth, which is authorized by a doctor, a doc. They send it to wherever they send it to, and you get back John Smith in all capital letters. Now, you think that's you because it looks like your name, but that is a dummy corporation where they exchange on the stock market. Now, if you've ever heard the expression, when two wealthy people get married, they ever hear the expression, well, they're good stock. Well, think about that in business. If you have wealthy people that are merging in a business, because that's all a marriage certificate is, is a merger of two corporations. Well, you need a license to do that. If Burger King wanted to merge with McDonald's, they have to have licenses to be able to do that. So a, a wedding is nothing more than a merger of two corporations. A baby is nothing more than the product that comes from those two corporations. So if you think about it, when you deliver a package, you can also ship it. Now, again, you're going to see the same words. So let's go into some of the hidden in plain sight things. Because, for example, when you go to court, there's always either jail or some site, some form of fee that you have to pay because it's basically dealing in commerce. You're a product and there is a dispute between two parties over that commerce. That is why a judge is going to rule. He is actually a captain of a ship, not literally, but figuratively. So if you look up the word bench, it also means bank. Well, let's get into the phonetics. Where else can you find a bank? Well, on both sides of a river. You have a river bank. Now, what does a river do? A river flows to the sea. What's another name for flow? It's current. So what is money? Current sea. You ever hear of the flow of money? These are things that people need to understand. So let's get into a whole bunch of terminology. And that's why when I'm talking about you as business and you as the, the person that's a stock, you're actually considered legally dead. So that's why when you see all these zombie movies, they're actually talking about you and they're making fun of you because even though you're alive under the law because you did not reclaim your DNA because you didn't know about it, they created a fictional corporation with your name and put it in all capital letters, which signifies that that is not you. That is a corporation. And actually, when you use your identification with that name on it, you're technically committing fraud 
even though you didn't know about it. So again, if you've ever had it where you spend time with a bunch of people, what do you say to the, about a person that people like when you're around? Well, they say, oh, that guy's good company. Or they say things like, um, if you're doing something and you don't want people to be listening in, what do you say? Mind your business or it's not your business. Um, let's see. Um, have you ever learned a trade? When you're looking for a skill, you're earning a trade. Well, what do they do in the stock market? Well, they trade stocks. Okay. So let's get into some of the phonetics that go with the border phonetics. Again, it's not going to be the same word as you see most of the time. So have you ever heard of the expressions? Um, let's get into the right ones. Okay. How about we'll start out with, if you are in business and you're going into the business with very powerful people, they say you are swimming with the sharks. Have you ever been drowning in, good, in debt? If you're a homeowner, have you ever said to somebody, well, I'm the captain of my ship? Or have you ever had a breach of contract? Well, a breach, when you breach onto another boat. Um, let's see. Have you ever gone shopping and wanted something that you were going to buy on sale? Now, I know S-A-L-E is different from S-A-I-L, but I'm talking phonetically. When you see the word, you think it means something else. But when you hear it, you can understand you ever have a problem with your mortgage and they say that your home is underwater? Or how about a liquidation sale? Or when you're trying to put all your money into one asset, you're pooling your money? Have you ever had a subprime mortgage? Ever hear the expression going down with the ship? If you're around a bunch of people you don't know, you could say you're in a sea of faces. You're always fishing for good deals you ever been deep in debt or swimming in debt you ever been sailing along in life or coasting on by you ever have a baby on board you know climb aboard anyone ever have their fees waived you know waving of fees you know ocean wave or sometimes you just got to anchor down. Ever harb had, a, had to uh, harbor a criminal? You ever hear of a stay of execution? Well, a stay is a large rope used to support a mast. You ever get a stern warning from a judge or a policeman? Well, a stern is a part of a ship. Um, you ever live in a build, or work in a building that's called a skyscraper? Well, a skyscraper is a triangular sill on a ship above the Royal. You know, when things are going hard, things are going bad, you're trying to stay afloat. Ever try and surf the net? Or when things are finally going well, your ship has come in? Uh, if you're about to die... You could keel over. Keel is another part of a ship. And if you don't want to do some business, you could bow out. Well, where's a bow on a ship? Um, have you ever gone, when you go food shopping, you ever go down a shopping aisle? You know, island, aisle. Ever have a whale of a good time? Um, you ever tell anyone to... Uh, jump in a lake or you sunk all of your money into something or you're swamped with work engulfed in good conversation no gulf are you working admirably no these are all things now think of all the things that are named with the word ship in it all right i'm going to give you just a few examples and there's many many more you have relationship companionship Friendship, dictatorship, starship, spaceship, airship, membership, fellowship, scholarship, uh, citizenship, showmanship, workmanship, battleship, censorship, hardship, township, lordship, flagship, courtship, leadership, dealership, warship, 
gunship, rulership, steedship. You getting a picture about this? And here's a wonderful one that also goes back to the C. Well, you ever have when you sign a document, they always put a little X and say, here, sign here, sign at the X. Well, remember the days when they talk about pirates and how they would bury treasure? What did they use to signify where the treasure was buried on a map? X. X marks the spot. Sign here, please. So these are things you have to know. I know people say, oh, you're reaching and everything like that. But if you want to think example after example that has specifically to do with water or the ocean or the sea is just a coincidence, I'm not here to convince you otherwise. I'm here to show you that this is how they've been getting away with it for very long periods of time. Because when you see certain words or hear certain phrases, you don't think about it. But now that when you hear it all in one particular area, you could see it starts to make sense. So I'm going to leave that up to you. If you want to get out of the system, you have to know what's going on. Otherwise, they can easily trick you. And ignorance of the law is no excuse. So once you realize that admiralty law is the law of all these courts that we go through, you'll understand why people end up in jail. Or even lawyers, they can reduce your sentence, but you still ultimately pay something. So they're stealing money from you because you are a product. You are speaking on behalf of a corporation that is not you. You are committing fraud against yourself, even though you don't know it. And in law, silence is the same as compliance. And if you don't know the law, I don't know how many times I can say it, but ignorance is no excuse. So if you've watched this to the end, um, you can put in your comments. I know this is admiralty law, and I appreciate the work, or something to that extent. I don't know what to say. But share this. Make your own videos, get this information out. Watch this with somebody that you love that doesn't believe in this stuff. Because like I said in the beginning, you don't have to believe in air to be able to breathe it. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave your comments after the beep.